I would pick up for the captive, show some love and heal the past that, but the one we think will never go away. But what if we could be happy for Lord and this, as one before the king, cause we believe. Just as rain, strong wants us to break. Oh, when we pray, there's a force that's shaking at the sound of praising. Nothing stays the same. Oh, when we pray, oh, when we pray, oh, see revival rising and see hope on the Generation stepping out in faith because we will be our people on our knees and one before the king because we believe hey. when the world starts changing, when the church starts praying, strong hearts starts to break. Oh, when we pray, there's a force that's shaking at the sound of praise. Welcome to this video. I'm glad that you have joined me. And today we want to share on the theme, Excelling Through Adversity. Excelling Through Adversity. This is based on Daniel chapter 6. I'll read verse 1 through verse 5. Bible says, It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps to be over the whole kingdom. And over these three governors, of whom Daniel was one, that the satraps might give account to them, so that the king would suffer no loss. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps, because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king gave no thought to setting him over the whole kingdom. So the governors and the satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they couldn't find no charge or fault because he was faithful, nor was there any error or fault to be found in him. And this man said, we shall not find any charge against this Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. So the governors and the satraps thronged before the king and they said, thus says, thus to the king, King Darius, live forever. All the governors of the kingdom, the administrators, the satraps, the counselors, and advisors have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make firm a decree that whoever petitions any god or man for 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and assign the writing so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which does not alter. 
we are talking about excelling in adversity. And we have a young man that was taken to captivity in Babylon. And this is none other than Daniel. Possibly he was a very young person, a teenager at that. And he was uprooted from his culture in Jerusalem. He was uprooted from his father's ancestral land. He was uprooted from his familiar environment. He was uprooted from the land that he had known all his years. And he was taken to a foreign land, the land of Babylon, as a young person. And Daniel did not only survive there, but he thrived. The Bible tells us that he served four kings. And all these four kings could not find any fault in him. So the question is, what was the secret of Daniel? Remember, he was in captivity in Babylon. The conditions were not very good. Babylon was known for wickedness. It was known for immorality. It was known for corruption. It was known for violence. It was known for bloodshed. It was the seat of wickedness in the world, so to speak. But this young man survived there, and he came out unscathed by sin. What were his secrets? Number one, we read in chapter one, verse eight, that Daniel purposed not to defile himself with the king's delicacies. In other words, he had made up his mind before any temptation came, before any coercion came, David, uh, Daniel had made up his mind that I am not going to defile myself. And that is a very important decision for any believer or even an unbeliever to make. I don't know whether you have set boundaries for yourself. There are certain things that you are not going to do as a man, as a woman, because they are going to dishonor God. They are going to spoil your relationship with God. They are going to cut the blessings of God from your life. That is what this man Daniel did. He purposed in his heart. And I want to challenge you. During this coronavirus, can you challenge yourself and make a resolve that you are not going to compromise your Christian faith, that you are not going to cut shortcuts, that you are not going to fight dirty, that you are not going to put aside Jesus Christ like a jacket and pick him when the corona is over. Can you make that decision? Will you come out of this coronavirus season, whichever time it lasts, whether a year or more, will you come without scratches? Will you come out without marks and regress like Daniel? Remember, Daniel was in captivity for seven years. Corona has just been in Kenya for the last five months. Have you already soiled yourself? You need to repent if that has happened and uh, make a resolve like Daniel. Purpose in your heart. Have that conviction. You want to honor God. You are not going to allow the enemy to defile you. Secondly, Daniel had friends. Again, from chapter one, they were taken in captivity, uh, several of them. But we have these four boys who were together Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel. Daniel had like minded friends. Friends who were trained in scripture, not in idolatry. Friends who believed in God. Friends who feared God. Let me ask you, my friend, do you have a, a partner? Maybe a prayer partner. Do you have a circle of friends that stands with you in trials, that prays with you, that calls God on your behalf, that you can go to for counseling in times of difficulties like now, that can uphold you in prayers, that can give you wise and only counsel in line 
with the word of God. Do you have such a circle of friends? As we go through this coronavirus, it's very, very important because this is a marathon. It is going to be a long journey to surround yourself with good support, good encouragers, well-wishers, people that will uphold you, people that you can share your feelings with and your burdens with. Daniel had these uh, three boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When they would be threatened by the king, he would call them, and they would pray throughout the night and seek the mind of God, seek the mysteries of God, seek the will of God, and God would come through for them. No wonder Daniel was so esteemed before God that throughout his life, the officials looked for areas of corruption and the shortcoming to trick him, to accuse him, but they could not find any except in the law of his God. And they came up with this scheme. I don't know whether there are some people who are scheming against you. They came up with a scheme and they told the king, because they wanted to trap Daniel, please set a st a statue. And they let none in Babylon worship or petition any other God except the statue that you are going to set. And they do it in writing. And these people had investigated the life of Daniel and they had discovered his third point of strength that he lived a lifestyle of prayer. Are you leading a lifestyle of prayer like Daniel? The Bible tells us that he used to pray three times in a day, in the morning, in the evening, uh, in the noon time, and in the evening. Three times pray. And uh, as he prayed, he got the right perspective. He got the encouragement. He got strength to continue serving, to continue being faithful. It helped him not to make any errors, not to make mistakes. And that is what prayer is going to do for you. It will help you not to make blunders. It will help you not to fall into the temptations of the evil one. It will help you not to fall into the corruption of this one. It will help you and strengthen you not to take shortcuts. So they decided to trap him in that area. And when they erected that statue and asked the king to write a law that nobody should pray to any other god except that idol, again Daniel and his friends were called and they said they were not going to bow before them, that idol. And they said, if God save us, well and good, but even, even if he does not save us, we are willing to surrender our lives. And we know the story. They defied the, the king's edict and they were thrown into the fire. And the God sent Jesus Christ into the fire. There was a fourth man in that fire and they never got burned. Daniel also later on he was thrown into the lion's den and God sent an angel and they shut the mouth of the lions. My brother, my sister, when you stand with God, he is also going to stand with you. He's going to fight for you. So don't worry about those people who are scheming against you. The Lord is going to deal with them. Remain faithful and excel even in this coronavirus. Let me summarize the three points. Determine purpose in your heart. Have this conviction that you are not going to defile yourself during this coronavirus. Secondly, get, get good friends around you who will give you the right perspective in light of course one and who will stand with you in these dry moments. And thirdly and finally, maintain a lifestyle and a posture of prayer. Cry to God. Take your challenges and your burdens to God and he is going to see you through. Let me pray for you. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I pray for my brothers and my sisters. 
Lord, I pray that you might give all of us enough resolve and determination to stand for you, to stand out even in this corrupt and wicked world. Lord, I pray that you surround us with good friends. Send divine help us to us in the name of our Lord, the Savior Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray that you might be glorified, that you might be magnified in our lives. Lord, I pray also that you help us to cultivate the spirit of prayer, supplication, and intercession. And as we cry to you, echoing to the cries of our heart and come through for us so that we will come out victoriously out of this crisis, out of this pandemic, like David, uh, Daniel did in his captivity in Babylon. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. The Lord bless you. Please share and uh, make your comments. God bless you. Amen.